Well, Matt, we just finished up our master class clinic. It was awesome. Everybody did great. Lots of spirit. Absolutely. But... We had a lot of fun out here, mm -hmm. but there's one problem, Pete. What was the problem, Matt? A lot of people, despite all the great shots we saw, making mistakes, missing for absolutely no reason at all. That is true. They were missing shots that they're fully capable of making. These are called unforced errors, and often they're the difference between winning and losing a match. That's right. Uh, in fact, I noticed more of them during the matches when the pressure was a little on. During the drills, you don't see it as often. You see it when the pressure builds up. In fact, we surveyed over 300 of our Crunch Time family, and 90% of the respondents said the thing that was holding them back in their tennis game, unforced errors that seemingly just creep in from nowhere at all. In our 50 plus years, I know it's kind of scary, Matt, to think about 50 plus years of playing and coaching experience. I'm the smaller chunk of that 50. <laughs> That's true, I'm the major chunk of it. <laughs> but we've identified 17 consistency leaks. But in this three part series, Pete, we are gonna focus on the top three, and they're pretty easy to fix. That's right, we ran this clinic out here in Cincinnati yeah, with people. This clinic. The master class sure. clinic. And people all over the country came to visit us, 3.0 to 4.5 players, so mm -hmm. players just like you, and these were the top three consistency leaks that stuck out like a sore thumb. So we want to make sure we at least give them how to fix these. That's right. We, we had about 23 campers out here. Yeah, 20, 23, 25. We saw 25. three common mm -hmm. mistakes. We're going to cover them in this three-part series. And guess what? We got pretty easy drills that you can work on to help fix these three problems. It's really not going to be that hard. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's go. Okay, guys. So the first consistency leak we're going to cover is called racket head awareness. What do I mean by this? This is, I want you to be very aware of exactly how the racket head needs to move through the ball in order to go into the court. Lots of people know that they want to hit the ball hard and they want to hit the ball in, they want toss and they want to hit slice, but they're not aware of where the racket head needs to be going at the exact moment of impact in order to make a successful shot. Lots of our students out there, they know they want to hit the ball hard, they know they want to hit toss and they know they want to hit slice, but they're not exactly sure how the racket head must line up in order to make a successful shot. And then on top of that, even if they're aware, they're not able to do it. We saw this over and over again here at the master class clinic, whereas people are going to swing and hit the shot, their racket face is a little too open, it's a little too closed, and this is what's causing people to miss. And if you're somebody who wants to get better, keep progressing up level by level, you really need this skill of racket at awareness. Maybe people at your club who don't have a desire to move to that next level and they're your traditional pushers, they don't need this because they can actually impact the ball with a, a completely open racket face and the ball will still go into the court. You as someone who wants to swing through and hit the ball harder, if your racket face is a little off, you're going to be hitting the ball out, you're going to be hitting the ball in the net, and we're going to demo what you need to do in order to become a better player and have more racket head awareness. Okay guys, so we can see here that Matt's playing the role of the classic pusher. His racket face is wide open at impact, and the ball is still going in. Because he's not bringing much racket head speed, it's not as important how his racket head comes through the ball. It's still going to land in, even if it's slightly open, but this is probably not what you dream of playing like. So we're going to show you how important it is to have the correct racket head angle as you're coming at the ball when you start swinging faster. All right, guys, so let's see Pete hit some shots. Everyone wants to hit the ball harder. As Pete pointed out earlier, I thought it was pretty funny when he said, it's nobody's dream to push the ball like that. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna go over there with my camera, get some slow-mo footage so you guys can really get a good look at what Pete's doing. Let's see what happens when Pete hits the ball hard like he wants to play, like everyone wants to play, with the open racket head face. And then we'll see what happens, how he adjusts his racket head using racket head awareness to get that ball to go in. So check this out. Pete's gonna hit it open, hard. It is literally going into the wall. Oh, 
All right, Pete, show us some good ones. All right, so how many times have you heard from your coach, hey, volleys, all you gotta do is stick your hands out and block the ball? Well, I wish it were that simple. Actually being at the net and being a great volleyer, you have to be a master at racket head awareness. And why is that? Because when you're going to volley, what might work up here and what will work up here is not going to work as we bring our racket down the net. And what I mean by that, if I'm getting a high volley right here, I will make this volley, guys. I will make this volley. But if I don't have the racket head awareness that as I come lower, I gotta make changes and I'm just here with the same racket head, now I'm going to miss that into the net. So depending on the height, the, how fast the ball is coming, I've gotta know how much my racket head has gotta be open versus closed to still make the shot. So let me just demo this. We're gonna take this shot right up here. It's gonna be high. I'm gonna volley it. It's gonna go in and then I'm gonna keep the same angle as I go down the net and you're gonna see that ball is gonna start going in the net. So here we go. I've got my feeder and it's up high. And you can see that those balls, a little higher, that those balls are going in no problem. Now, as the ball comes lower, and I keep that same angle, you can see that now that's going in the net. Let's try, let's try one more of those guys, just so you can really get a good look. I'm not changing the angle, and those are in the net. So I've gotta have the racket head awareness that as it's going lower, I've gotta open that frame up a little more so I can hit that little sweet drop shot. So as the ball's lower, I gotta open up. Oh, that's a really good one. So guys, as your opponent gives you different heights to work with, the racket head awareness, you've gotta have it so you're making these little subtle changes so you're still hitting the volley just like you want. All right, so let's just see the same thing with a backhand volley. So if I can try to freeze it at contact even, ready? About there. Right? Now I get a low volley. Look the same? Doing the same thing. Same racket head. And what I really want, hit it even more open. Now it's beautiful. Now it's beautiful. Look at this contact. Hit that same contact up high. It went in, but that's not a good shot. That's going to get crushed. So how do we start working on our racket awareness? Matt and I have three drills you can start working on instantly. In fact, this first one you can do right in the house right now. What I want you to do is get your racket out and we're going to close our eyes. Call this the peekaboo drill. And what we're going to do is, let's say we're going to hit a forehand and I want you to start out full racket head speed and then stop it on contact. You open up your eyes, you take a look and then you ask yourself the question, is that ball actually going to go in? You're going to find that you're going to try this and you're going to close your eyes, you're going to open and you're going to see things like this because I've done this before many, many years on the court. I will see my students like that, like that when they open their eyes and you want to be able to swing as fast as you can and then when you open up, you can take a look and ask yourself the question, is that ball going to go in the court? And your number two tip today to help with your racket head awareness you're going to need to break out your phone. You can use the Coach's Eye app. You can just use the camera. If you have an iPhone like me, I know you got the slow motion. Um, it's really easy to set up with a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, just put it on a stack of books, whatever you got to do, and just hit some shots side on the same way that this camera that you're watching this video on right now is set up. Have someone feed you some balls, ball machine, whatever it takes, and just hit some balls, play it back in slow motion, and see where is your racket face at contact can learn a lot. I know a lot of players just at the Tennis Masters Clinic we just did, 
were telling me, I don't like to see video of myself because it makes me depressed when I see how bad my technique looks. A lot of us think we look a lot better in our mind than we really do. But if you wanna look the way you think you look in your mind, this is a great way to do it. So check your racket head awareness, slow motion video. You'll see everything. As you can see, when I slow this clip down, where's my contact at? That's video tip number two. So this might be the best racket head, drill, racket head awareness drill in the world right here. And I call it the pop and rock drill. I love this drill and what you're doing is you're stopping the ball. Someone's gonna feed you the ball, so Gain's gonna feed it. I'm gonna pop it up. And then I'm gonna rock it to the other side, okay? So it's, I call it the pop and rock drill. And you'll find that many people, when they do this, they'll find the ball and it'll go way up in the air. That's too high. Do another one, Gaines. People will come here and they'll try and the ball will go behind them. So it looks simple, but don't be frustrated if that's happening to you because this is really developing that skill of racket head awareness. One more there, a couple more. Good, see, here, just tap it, put it right where you want. You want that ball to get up right around your nose so you can have nice subtle control, nice subtle hands, and then hit him. Last one, getting set, pop, and rock. So there we go, Matt. They got a lot to work on in video number one. Yeah, that's a lot of great tips, and I uh, hope everyone can go home and work on that because it's gonna help you a lot. Racket head awareness is so important. Now remember, Matt is going to be giving away something pretty cool at the end of this three. Yeah, yeah, Matt, you are. And uh, what we're going to do is we want. All right, with the giving away part, but the, the purchasing part. What, what is this thing we're giving away? Well, I, should we tell them right now? We'll save it for video two. Right now, what we want them to do so they can get entered in the raffle to win whatever this mystery thing I have to buy is comment below. Mm -hmm. What do you think your number one consistency leak is? Is it racket head awareness? I don't know. Maybe. Whatever it yeah. is, we're going to announce it in video two. So comment below. If you comment on all three videos in the series, you will have a chance to win this fabulous thing that I have to buy. <laughs> comment below your number one consistency leak. And yeah. We'll reveal it in video two. Yeah, video number two. I'm really excited about because before we did the Masterclass Clinic, I thought Rackethead Awareness was going to be the number one leak that I know is for most players. Mm -hmm. But video number two, actually everybody, didn't matter what the level was, whether they were like a 3-0 or our four or five players, even had this consistency leak. So I can't wait to reveal it in video number two. Okay, so they now know it's not racket awareness. So comment below, what do you think it is? It's not racket awareness. <laughs> we'll find out in video two. Give us your best guess. We'll see you really soon.